everyone, welcome to another Robot Varnick uh, seeing what's inside video. Today's video is to see what is inside of a utility pump. So with the uh, crazy weather going on lately, a lot of you out there might have seen one of these or maybe even used one of these or so. This one of course is not working so the idea of this video is to see what's inside. And if a uh, restoration can't be done to get it working again, it's going to be taken apart before your very eyes. So before we get started, it's a good idea to look at the pump to see how it is to take it apart. So there's uh, some Phillips screws here and some other Phillips screws here. So we want to be able to get inside this thing. So that means taking the casing apart. So let's get started and for that before you start any project you should make sure you have the right tools on hand in this case you need screwdrivers, pliers and you know, all the good tools so make sure you have the right tools on hand so let's see if, what's, if there's anything blocking the impeller, the part that sucks the water into the pump. And as you can see folks, there's other little screws in there to take it the housing apart so we're gonna take those apart too one good thing about this pump is that the parts are made of stainless steel screws and as you can see the screws from different parts of the manufacturer are all the same size so whatever screws came from they're all fit no matter where you put, got them from. So you want to get all those screws out of there, get all the screws out. It won't come apart if you don't take all the screws out. One of the problems a lot of YouTube people have been having is getting people to watch your entire video from beginning to end. So, to make that worthwhile, folks, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say a secret message, and every now and then during the video, I'm going to reveal parts, words of the secret message to get you to watch the whole thing. And if you know, put, put the secret message together, what the secret message sentence is, you'll get a, a prize. Stay tuned for the first part of the secret message. Ah, there's screws here too. There's two more screws right in there. And here's the motor. And as you can see, there's no more screws down here to take the motor apart. Oh, but stop the presses, folks. On these utility pumps, there's supposed to be a little air passage here to allow the pump to work. And if that passage is blocked, well, the pump's not going to work. So let's see if the power actually, if the impeller turns when power is applied. Well, that reveals the problem, folks. 
The pump is actually good all along. When these pumps fail, it's usually this little air valve here that gets clogged. And as you can see, it's very clogged. That's why it stopped pumping water, because it is clogged with goo and dirt. So, use your trusty owl and clean the dirt out of the, the vent hole. So use a, a utility knife. We'll clean the, the vent hole. Oh, and the first word of the secret sentence is always. The word always. So remember that the first letter, the word is always. Stay tuned for the rest of the secret message. So as you can see, the clean the vent hole will allow the pump to work as according to manufacturer specifications. While you have the pump open, you can inspect the rubber seal too. You don't want to make the hole too big, because then uh, they won't vent right either. So you got to keep the pump according to manufacturer specifications. So clean that vent hole. See, there's some debris in there. Here's some sandpaper to make sure the gasket has a good seal. Of course, this is the gasket, so you want to make sure the gasket is clean. The second word of the secret sentence is allow. The second word is allow. So you want to clean the gasket so it gets a good seal. We're basically putting the pump back together. But since this is a robot varnish taking things apart video you want to see what's inside and so do I so we're going to take this thing apart before your very eyes as you can see this all the screws are standard which is a uh, good more efficient for the manufacturer to use the same size screw in its whole production process when you're taking it apart, you want to destroy its waterproofing, so you, you have to watch to make sure the waterproof integrity is maintained. Because it looks like they put a force seal there to keep water out. So if there's any rubber gaskets on the screws, you want to keep them intact. It's quite possible to mat the motor was actually bonded in. Oh, that was that was oil, folks. That that actually belongs in there. Now to get an idea of how much oil came out of the pump. Well, some oil came out, folks. You gotta, we gotta put the oil back in. Obviously, the pump needs the oil to pump, and it seems like a thin type of motor oil. 
the pump the oil is actually very clean so I believe it is only only the vent the clogged vent hole that kept it from working and given that the it's strange because the manufacturer did not mention this thing having oil or the hole being oil the third word in a secret sentence is for for the word is for so we got to put the oil back in and it seemed like a light grade of uh, motor oil So we're going to refill it with about the same amount of oil that came out. Of course it would be nice if the manufacturer said, or at least made a mark in the mold when they manufactured this thing that this is an oil hole, but no such luck. They obviously didn't expect crazy people like me to take this out. So carefully, certainly a funnel would help. Would do you think a funnel would help? Let me know in the comments if using a funnel would make it a pouring oil a lot easier. There's also no specification in the instructions for how much oil the pump needs, which is another failure on the on the manufacturer. Of course, they want when the pump fails, they want you to buy a new pump. So that's about the amount of oil that leaked out when I, I'm thinking it was a screw to take out. They should have marked it as an oil reservoir, not a regular assembly screw. Let me know what you think in the comments. Just a quick reminder that that is public domain music playing. It's not regular music. And it has to be public domain or you have trouble with the YouTube police. So that's public domain music, folks. While you're putting the, oil, the pump back together again, uh, clean and inspect the impeller to make sure the impeller is turns freely which it does you see that earlier now we got some oil laying around you could put some oil on the gasket so keep the gasket uh, waterproof you don't want water leaking in the gasket after you've taken it apart So it would be nice if they at least mentioned that was an oil reservoir, but it's not. So if you have a pump like this and it 
has trouble, you could uh, see if it's leaking oil or not. Maybe that's your problem too. It could be low on oil, but they don't tell you how much oil, like an automobile, he'll tell you how many quarts or how much oil a car has, but this pump, they don't tell you that. Oh, one good thing about this manufacturer is they put the key in there so either the robot or the human assembling the pump just needs to put the the piece on the on the key and it fits it in place. Quick rub of sandpaper to remove any dirt or grit and use your oily rag to put a coat of oil on there to help the seal get a better get a better uh, seal. And the next word in this secret sentence is A, the letter A. So you want to inspect to make sure the where the water comes in to the pump is all nice and clear. There's no grit build up in there. The pump should suck up lots of water next time. The person who this pump belongs to will be very happy indeed that it's working again. That it, uh, Still works. So the seal's in place. The vent hole is clean. The vent hole here, remember the vent hole is nice and clean now. It should work nicely. And the manufacturer even made sure that the assembly keys here and here make fitting the pieces together well either for the robots or human assembly workers so we can put the thing back together again and since it's a rubber seal the rubber of the seal will take up any compression in the tightening of the screws just remember where you took all the screws out of when you took it apart then you know how to put it back together again so it maintains its seal so it, water doesn't spray out all over the place. And if you have a pump like this that didn't work and you've cleaned the vent seal this is a helpful video. Let me know in the comments if this uh, solution worked for you. It's kind of like reviving a dead uh, utility pump. That'll be the title of the video. Reviving Dead Utility Pump. Uh, the next word in the secret sentence is flat. The flat. Now you might notice some of these little holes here are hard to get to. This is where you use a pair of needle nose pliers to get the screw in there. 
so I'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to get the screw in there. And there's one more hole there to use the needles pliers for. Now that you have all the screws back in place, it's a good idea to tighten them, kind of like when you tighten lug nuts on a wheel, you want to tighten them in side to side order. So tighten one over here, tighten one over here, over here in the star pattern. And if those of you in the automotive field will know what I'm talking about, you want the steel, the rubber seal to be uniform compression. Now inspect the screen. You want to make sure the screen is nice and clear. You might be tempted to make the holes bigger, but that's a bad idea. Given that there's so many little holes, it makes up for having one big hole. And having one big hole could let something in that could clog the impeller. So you want to leave the holes to manufacturer specification. You might have noticed that one screw is missing on here already, so what happened to the missing screw is anybody's guess, but it's not here now. And since the screws are stainless steel, you want to use stainless steel screws if you want to open it up again, otherwise a metal, ordinary metal screw would rust and be hard to get out. So here's actually the carrying handle for the pump. You'll notice that the carrying handle applies pressure to not only hold the pump up, but to... There's a seal between the cord and the casing, so it actually puts compression on the rubber boot there too to keep the... The, the carrying handle allows pressure to be apply to help seal the cord so you can put it underwater. So you don't want the thing you want to maintain the manufacturer's specification is if it gets electrified underwater and you're standing in the water it might be the last thing you ever do. Because the electricity is very dangerous, folks. It can kill you to death. Oh, what do you know? Silly me. This is supposed to go under there to provide the compression for the cord. This is what's supposed to provide a seal for the pump. This seal there.
and I'm talking about maintaining manufacturing specifications and I'm not even doing it myself so folks this is entertainment purposes only so don't don't try this at home Now that both washers are providing pressure to, to the boot, the cord boot, waterproof sh should be maintained as from it left the manufacturer's factory. And they had this little uh, thing here with the screw to hold the cord in place. And don't forget the little washer on there, there's a little washer to hold this clip in place. So to summarize what we learned today, what did we learn today? Let me know what you learned in the comments and because uh, as far as I know what turned out to be a dead utility pump was actually quite a live pump. So it still works folks, it still works. And that brings me to the end of the video and that means the last word of the secret sentence is tire. The last word of the secret sentence is tire. If you know what the secret uh, secret sentence was, let me know and you'll get a robot Varnick uh, gift. So the pump works. So don't forget to like and subscribe and by all means comment if this video helped you. Let us know. So that's the end for now folks. See you next time. Goodbye.